Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology, part 2, module 43. Today, we will present a proof of Brouwer's fixed point theorem, which you may term as analytic proof. There are quite a few different proofs of this one and this is due to Milner. You may have come across with the following classical and famous result which we call Brouwer's fixed point theorem. Every continuous function from a closed disk dn to dn has a fixed point. Certainly for n equal to 1, if you take the closed interval minus 1 plus 1, it is a familiar result to you in the real analysis course. Indeed, it is an easy corollary to intermediate value theorem. Right? Maybe you have done it any closed interval a b to a b, you have a function, continuous function, then it has a fixed point. The general version was proved by Brouwer using Lebesgue covering theory. In modern times, it is fashionable to prove this using homology theory. You may find a proof of this using simplicial approximation in my book, for example, or in NPTEL course on algebraic topology part 1. Milner gave a proof of this using just multivariable calculus and stone weistrass theorem. In fact, stone weistrass theorem for functions defined on a closed and bounded subset of Rn is much easier than the general stone weistrass theorem. So, in this section, right now, we will present a proof which is simplified version of Milner's proof and that is due to C. A. Rogers. In Hurewitz and Wallman's book, which I am referring to quite often, the authors also give a completely elementary proof, quote unquote, of the Brouwer fixed point theorem. However, the word elementary should not be confused to mean easy. Indeed, the concept they introduce in order to prove this theorem, namely triangulation, they do not use the word triangulation at all, but that is what they are doing and that is in an ad hoc manner they are doing. So, that is better left to be learned properly in an algebraic topology course. So, that is one reason which we are not uh, very keen to present that proof here. On the way, on the way while learning Milner's proof, you would have witnessed, you know, inverse function theorem and stone weistrass theorem being applied. So, that is also another motivation. So, both of these things we have studied in this course itself. So, the main reason to include this result, which is seemingly a diversion, is that it is going to play a key role in the final step of our goal in dimension theory. Okay? So, that is why it is here. So, let us begin with Ernest, this lemma which gives you three equivalent conditions, all of them are the statement of, not a conclusion, statement of Brouwer's fixed point theorem. Every continuous respectively C1 function from f, f from dn to dn has a fixed point. There is no continuous or respectively C1 function r from dn to sn minus 1. So, the codomain has changed here, pay attention to that, such that 
r of x equal to x for all x inside s n minus 1 that is the boundary of b n. So, such a map r is called a retraction of d n on to s n minus 1. We do not need that word, but just for your information, I am telling you that. The third condition is there is no continuous respectively C1 function h from s n minus 1 cross i to s n minus 1 such that h of x 0 is x and h of x 1 is x naught a constant for all x in s n minus 1. The third condition just says that the identity map of s n minus 1 is not homotopic to the constant function. There is no continuous means not homotopic to constant function. So, in each of them, I have put in the bracket this C1, C1, C1. So, there are there are one version which is all where you have to take C1 all everywhere, another version which you have to take just continuous, continuous, continuous. That is the meaning of this. These three are equivalent conditions. Notice that B and C are for our statements in negation, whereas A is an assertion. So, that is the beauty of this uh, approach here. So, what we will do is we will prove that these three conditions are equivalent. Okay. Then, in order to prove this one, we can either prove this or prove this one. So, that is the whole idea. Okay. So, let us prove that A implies B. Everywhere I am now going to take only continuous function, then I will indicate what to do when you have C 1 function. Okay. So, assume that every continuous function from d n to d n has a fixed point. Now, in order to prove B is not true, implies A is not true. That is what we would like to prove. A implies B. Okay. If B is not true, B itself is in a negation. That means we have a retraction, namely continuous function from D n to S n minus 1, which is identity on the boundary. Right? Take that map compose it with this alpha which sends x to minus x antipodal map. Okay. So, you are inside S n minus 1. Now, you go back to D n by the inclusion map. That is all. Okay. What happens? What happens? This function will never have any fixed points at all. Okay. See, if f x, if this whole thing is f, f x is equal to x, first of all, means that the point x, you know, has to be on the boundary, because f x will be on the, in the boundary here, s n minus 1. But on the, on the boundary, this is identity followed by x going to minus x. So, identity go, x goes to minus x here. Okay. So, f x cannot be minus x. Okay. f x cannot be equal to x. So, that is all. So, there are no fixed points for this composite function. So, that is a contradiction that is denying A. So, that means not B implies not A, which is same as A implies. Now, I want to prove B implies A. Suppose there is a map f from d n to d n such that f x is never equal to x, extend the unique line segment f x to x. See, these are vectors inside some R n. So, line segment between two points makes sense, two vectors makes sense f x to x, but you take this line segment, extend it in the direction of f x. Okay, from f x to x, from f x to x, okay, so that whatever point you get, it should be on the sphere. 
okay so you will get a unique point so why this makes sense because the entire line segment is contained in the closed unit disk maybe it is inside strictly inside the unit disk so you will have to extend it okay as soon as you extend it because the boundary because the entire thing is a bounded set it will have to hit the boundary somewhere okay so hit boundary is the sphere so this is just large uh, just uh, geometric way of getting this function g in olden days that was enough for people to understand that g is continuous even today i can leave it as an exercise but here because you may be seeing such things first time i will give you a full proof of why gx is continuous just because this f is continuous fx is continuous okay so how do we do that look at the entire line segment entire line from a, a passing through x and fx okay so what is the parameterization it is t times fx plus 1 minus t times x as t ranges over r right so this left hand side this right hand side as t ranges over r they are all points inside this line now we want this line to be one on the sphere and from x to fx so fx to x so it is towards x okay so beyond x maybe it's x but it's beyond x including x therefore i have to take the non positive root of the quadratic equation y quadratic equation norm of the left right hand side must be equal to 1 norm square equal to 1 will give you quadratic equation so norm square when you write i am re rewriting it this way t square times norm v square plus twice t into v this is the dot product v dot x plus norm x square minus 1 equal to 0 where v is a short form for fx minus x the vector fx minus x you can just check that when you take norm of this this function here in write it into fx minus x t times this and so on what you get is this one here t is the variable x is fixed therefore fx is fixed therefore v is fixed so this is a quadratic with some coefficient norm v square twice v dot x and the constant term is norm x square minus 1 okay now where does x range x is inside the closed ball okay dn therefore norm x square is less than equal to 1 so norm x square minus 1 is less than equal to 0 this is a negative thing it follows that the discriminant of this this quadratic okay is non negative okay and identically zero if and don't only if this norm x square is equal to 1 okay not only that identically zero means the other one this coefficient v dot x must be also zero v dot x is zero means what x and v are perpendicular to each other so therefore what we have one is norm of fx square will become norm of x square plus norm of v square okay norm of x square plus norm of v square okay which is bigger than one which is absurd all right so therefore the discriminant is strictly positive and hence the two roots are continuous okay so what i am saying discriminant is non negative identically zero if and only if this happens okay if this happens there will be problem so it must be strictly positive that most we have get the two roots are continuous functions okay whenever something is uh, zero when uh, the roots are equal and so on there will be problem about continuity which root are it is choosing and so on so here 
the disturbance is strictly positive so there is no uh, no problem about that so continuity of the roots follows what we have to take we have to take the non positive uh, root of this and that will give you the the solution which is a continuous solution so g will be in terms of that because put that value t okay then left hand side this right hand side will be g of x so here the picture of and the proof is completed for many many people f x is here x is here i am extending it towards x from f x to x and hit g by chance if x is already on the boundary then g x is equal to x so that is the beauty of this construction okay g is like r in our statement okay that is the whole idea okay so we have completed the proofs of a implies b and b implies a so here again what we have proved not b implies not a no that is what is a map like this no not a so not a implies not b earlier not b implies not a now not a implies not b that is what we have now b and c are very easy look at this formula r times r of 1 minus t times x equal to h of x t where x is on sn minus 1 t is between 0 and 1 so 1 minus t is also between 0 and 1 so this is an element of the closed disk x is an element of the boundary sphere okay r times this one will make sense for all functions defined on dn okay i'm just putting h of x t if i know h of x t i i could have defined r by this formula and vice versa so this is a formula which will define either side if you know the uh, other side if r is given as in b when h x is continuous r will be continuous okay and if h of x h of x comma 0 is x then this means just means that r of x is x that is that's what we wanted that it is a retraction okay h is of course taking values in sn minus 1 therefore r will always take in sn minus 1 right and vice versa and finally what happens when t equal to 0 okay h of x sorry h when t equal to 1 h of x t is a constant in what is that constant r of this one right so that if you have r then h will satisfy that property and vice versa okay therefore this one formula proves both b implies c and c implies d now comes the part wherein we take everywhere c1 functions okay if this is c1 then that is c1 and vice versa so there is no problem when b implies c in here what happens if all these functions namely fx fx is a c1 function these roots are also c1 functions in fact they are analytic functions right roots of a polynomial wherever they are you know positively defined uh, strictly uh, defined they are analytic functions all right so so that will take care of that wherever i have so here also alpha is also a like smooth function x going to minus x so this is a inclusion map so if this is c1 the composite is c1 so what we get f is with c1 and so on. okay so simultaneously all these three statement in both the c1 case as well as general continuous case are proved by the way even if you just prove c1 case here 
you have to argue for continuous separately we have to be done separately there is no no other choice here one doesn't imply the other you have to do go through the whole thing separately but that is easy anyway so having prepared the ground for uh, the general theorem now the idea is to prove the smooth version of b and then use stone wise stress to prove the continuous version of a you see <laughs> both six point theorem will be proved like that we state and prove these two things separately no confusion okay so there is no c1 function r dn to sn minus 1 such that r is equal to x for all x belong to sn minus 1 now this is then assertion earlier this was just a statement equivalent to two other statements now we are proving this one okay so what is the proof assuming that there is such a function let us just tentatively put sx equal to rx minus x and for each t in 0 1 let us put rt of x equal to 1 minus t times x plus t times rx so joining the identity map and rx this can be rewritten as x minus tx you combine with rx and write it as t times sx because sx is rx minus x okay just look at this formula rt is from dn to dn because rx is from dn to sn minus 1 x is identity and this is line joining the two points you see so it will be a uh, convexity of dn will tell you that this is always inside dn however this difference may go out also you don't know where it is so this s is from dn to rn because i started with r as a smooth function all these are smooth functions now let us have a notation here b and d no so open disk namely set of all points wherein norm x is less than 1 for each fixed x inside bn take the total derivative of rt okay it's a linear map from rn to rn okay there's a total derivative okay note that the total derivative of rt at any point is the identity map of rn plus t times the derivative of s operative on x okay this is also a linear map from rn to rn so d r d of t r d of r t is identity plus t times d of s so these derivatives are taken with respect to x okay t is also variable you may wonder what is happening rt where t is frozen here you see rt is one single map for each fixed x now you look at the function t going to the determinant of this linear map see this is a linear map from rn to rn right so you can talk about its determinant d of uh, determinant of d of rt at x okay x is fixed now one linear map is there look at the determinant but t is there so you know determinant of this identity plus some matrix it will be a polynomial in t of maybe possibly of uh, degree n right because t occurs in each uh, entry here okay so so this is uh, a polynomial function therefore if i define the function f from closed interval 0 1 to r by taking the integral of this 
function determinant of d t r t okay integrated on the entire of this open ball b n okay remember remember that this function is a continuous function okay because we started the c1 function and then we have taken one derivative so derivative is a continuous function so this is just a ordinary riemann integration okay n fold you know iterated integral you may say okay so there is a variable t involved here therefore this will become a polynomial in t polynomial function in t because integrated in, uh, integrand is a polynomial okay this polynomial we are going to show that is a constant function what is that integral ft is a constant function then we will compute f0 and f1 separately and show that they are unequal that is a contradiction we started with something in the contrary there is no function in the statement assume there is a function so we are getting a contradiction that will complete the proof so what does it remain we have to compute f0 and f1 okay so first claim is there exist 0 less than t not less than 1 okay such that this rt is injective for all t between 0 and t not okay look at at 0 you have no control Now, what is r 0 r 0 is just x there you are lucky it is injective okay so we now have we now say that there is a some positive there is an interval of positive length here in which rt is injective okay look at the function s from dn to rn this is even map right therefore that is a constant c positive such that this lipschitz condition holds s x1 minus s x2 the norm is less than some constant times x1 minus x2 norm okay this is true because dn is compact you know closed and bounded and c1 so you look at the derivative take the maximum of the derivative that can be taken as c that is the general uh, uh, statement here this is some calculus now suppose x1 is not equal to x2 and rt of x1 equal to rt of x2 remember we have this formula right rt is x plus t times sx now that will imply that x2 minus x1 is equal to t times sx1 minus sx2 okay because rt of x1 is equal to rt of x2 so you put equality you get this one but then norm of x2 minus x1 will be less than t times norm of this okay t is some positive constant 0 to 1 right norm of this norm of that is less than c times norm of x1 minus x2 all right but then these two numbers are the same here and they are x1 no, x1 is not equal to x2 this is a non zero number the non zero number is less than equal to some some number times the same number means this must be bigger than 1 okay Once it's bigger than one, I can choose one by c as t naught, and then for t less than t naught, we will we will now have this. That's all. 
okay so this this uh, inequa this can happen only beyond this uh, t not that's why we take something less than t uh, less than or equal to t not this will never happen that means that s is injective the rt is injective sorry all right now let us go ahead okay as uh, before bn denotes the open unit ball inside r we claim that there exists a t1 now another constant between zero and open zero this time huh? again positive constant around less than or equal to t not we don't want to go out of t not such that this function rt from bn to bn on the open disk is a diffeomorphism for all t belonging to zero t1 so this is a claim now that is such a t it may not happen for all of them okay if this t1 is larger than t0 we will take a smaller than that once it is true for all that then you can take it, uh, let t0 you can take t1 equal to t0 itself that's all that is not a big problem so we have to find a such a t1 that is the whole idea which is positive now look at dr of x which we have seen that identity of rn plus t times ds of x right therefore it follows that there is a t1 belong to 0 to and positive t1 is what i want to say then i will choose it less than t not such that the determinant of tr of x is positive why because when you put t equal to 0 what is the determinant it is determinant of the identity map which is 1 by continuity of the derivative continuity of the determinant function here actually as a function of t okay for t some positive number de determinant of uh, the left hand side here determinant of rt must be positive okay now assume that t belongs to 0 t1 okay now t1 has been chosen in its way so i say this is good, good enough then put gt equal to rt of bn see remember rt is just some map from bn to rn but we want to say that the, the interior inside dn to rn but take only the in, 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 uh, the open ball the open ball goes inside the open ball is what we have to show so look at gt equal to rt of bn okay we want to show that this gt is inside bn first of all okay why gt is inside bn because t is less than 1 i have chosen to be something okay here 0 0 t1 t1 this one is less than 1 okay 1 minus t times x plus uh, that is the formula i have to use that by inverse function theorem rt from bn to rn is an open mapping so this is very important here it is an open mapping into the whole of rn as a as a map into the whole of rn okay by step 1 rt is injective also because now we are taking t1 to be less than t0 so both of them will be true here okay so it remains to prove that gt is equal to whole of bn that is the only thing which we need what so far we have observed is it is injective okay it is an open mapping and so it is a homeomorphism diffeomorphism on to gt so if we show gt is actually bn you are done okay suppose gt is not equal to the whole of bn we have already observed that it is inside bn okay so if some open subset is not the whole space the whole space is what bn another uh, open disk that's all then there is a point y which is in the boundary of gt but is inside bn okay 
DN is after all uh, convex thing. So, you can take a boundary point, you take a po uh, point inside Y, inside GT, join them, it will intersect boundary of T somewhere and that somewhere must be inside the N already. Therefore, you can have a sequence Xn, Xk okay, inside Bn such that Rt of Xk tends to Y okay, because they are elements of Gt. Rt of Xk will be an element of Gt, so they converge to Y because Y is on the boundary of this set passing to a subsequence if necessary, we can assume that x k itself tends to some point x inside d n because d n is compact, right. So, but then R t of x is the limit of R t of x k, right, because R t is a smooth function actually, so it is continuous also, but R t of x k is equal to y belongs to gt because rt of xk we are assumed that converges to y so limit is y so that is an element of gt because it is rt of something okay gt is what gt is the image of rt so which is an open set but we chose a point y inside the boundary uh, that is absurd therefore g t is equal to b n. So, in two steps we have proved that we have located a positive number between 0 and 1 such that for all points inside that one R t is a homium diffeomorphism on to the entire b n, b n to b n. Okay. Now, we can conclude the lemma. So, step 2 combined with the change of variable formula for integration implies wherever it is diffeomorphism for all those this function f t must be the volume of r, volume of the whole thing, volume of b n or volume of d n they are the same. Okay. So, why look at this one? this is the determinant of d t is what we have got. What happens to d t if t is inside that uh, interval? This will be a invertible map, okay. because determinant is positive there. So, whenever you have invertible uh, function, the diffeomorphism, you have the change of variable formula. Okay. So, so, some deep, uh, not very deep, but some really good analysis has been used here. So, vo volume of F t inside 0 to t 1 is volume of uh, the d n is given by F t, but that is a constant. So, what is the meaning of this one? In this uh, non trivial interval, okay, positive interval, F polynomial function is a constant. Therefore, this f t must be equal to volume of this d n okay, on the whole of 0 1. In fact, if it makes sense on the beyond also it will be 0. A polynomial which is a constant on a sub uh, non empty open interval will be constant everywhere. Okay. So, we have computed in particular f 0, okay, f 0 is a volume. Now, we shall compute f 1, then see that it is a different value and that is a contradiction. Okay. Now, look at r 1 of x, that is equal to r x for, for all points inside s n minus 1, okay, for all x inside b n. Therefore, if you look at R x dot R x equal to 1, that is the same thing as saying R x is of unit length, right? It is a dot product. Therefore, for any v inside R n, if you take the derivative of this equation that is 0, it just means that in any direction 
and the directional derivative dv of r okay denotes the direction derivative dv of r dot rx must be zero the derivative of this one in the direction of v is nothing but dv of r dot rx plus r dot rx dot dv of rx that is the leibniz rule okay and that is zero so twice that will be zero means this is the this zero okay what does this mean the entire image under this linear map see v is a vector dr of x operating upon v is the direction derivative so direction derivatives are all perpendicular to rx therefore this entire linear space is perpendicular to rx it is contained in the hyperplane perpendicular to rx but that is of dimension less than n so this implies the linear map okay associated to that as determinant zero okay because its rank is n minus 1 at most it may be smaller or so i don't care so this happens for all x inside b okay therefore integral f1 will be zero because determinant is zero the right hand side the integrand itself is zero okay therefore f1 is zero okay f is a constant f1 must be f0 but on the other side we have volume volume of the uh, closed disk or open disk is not zero so that completes the proof of the statement b for what smooth function given any topological space x and a homeomorphism c from x to dn the conclusion of lemma 9.31 is valid for any continuous function g from x to x although for we take f equal to c composite g composite c inverse where dn to dn and apply theorem 9.31 okay so what i have done is i have just proved the c1 c1 uh, version here now you can apply weierstrass theorem to uh, uh, get the uh, continuous version as soon as i prove any one of them what all the three uh, uh, statements gets proved in particular bros fix point theorem gets proved okay so that's all so thank you